Welcome back, guys. My name is Eric. This is Metal 7 Gaming. We're playing Football Manager 2019. We are with Kaiserslautern die Rot in Teufel. So, um, this is going to be just a quick one as we kind of think about the January transfer window and what we got going on and looking at stats and stuff. And uh, I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff here. Let's go ahead. Let's remove this. I don't need that. Um, personality. Let's just say that nobody on this team right now has a horrible personality, but we also don't have any resolute. We've got a professional down here in Isaac, which is great. We've got a lighthearted to know, which I think is probably the worst of the group that we've got. Other than that, um, nothing here is terrible. Nothing here is spectacular. Let's go ahead and remove this column. It's not going to make any changes. We don't need this one right now. It doesn't affect what we're talking about. Um, transfer status, we can leave that on. We, we can leave some of the rest of this stuff on. Um, appearances probably doesn't matter as much, but we'll leave it on anyway. It might play a part. Now, what I would like to do is what we're looking for are um, reasonable potential for youngsters. Um, we're looking at injury risk. We're looking at salary, right? And uh, let's go ahead and take this off now because this is a short term. This is how are they doing right now based on everything else. Let's go ahead and remove this column. We're worried about this where we've got a very high here for Kraus. Um, in fact, we can flip these here. Kraus, Hanol, Spavis, all high or very high. Uh, Esmol and Huth above average. So, and we see Esmol and Huth both have major injuries um, this season for us. So, is what it is. Uh, and in my previous playthrough, Kraus had a major injury. So, that's, that's that. Unfortunately, these three guys, two of them also happen to be some of our highest paid players. Um, and this one's not getting any game time at all because he's not very good. So I'd like to get rid of all three of those guys for those reasons to begin with. But let's see how they've actually worked as a team. Other than, if we look at appearances, um, almost everybody's had a pretty reasonable run at things. Obviously, these he's a youngster. He's just there for depth and for mentoring. Uh, he's been injured the whole time. Andre, we've talked about not playing, but Tessaru, kind of the same thing. So all the players we're going to talk about have had a pretty reasonable shot. Huth has probably had the smallest sample size of the players we're, we're discussing today, but he still had a total of eight appearances. So now, initially, we can look at a couple things. We can look at goals and assists, just straight goals and assists. Again, we have a pretty wide range from four to 20 matches essentially in. Um, so this isn't as good. I'm more interested in goals per 90 um, and assists per 90 as far as that goes. So um, less interest in assists specifically at this point, and we'll talk about why in a minute. Um, goals per 90, you can see Flavius at the top 1.25 with his one goal in for the, for the, for the, you know, 20 minutes he's played. Um, uh, Beata's doing really well with 0.57, Timmy Theo 0.56. Um, where is Huth? Has he, has he scored any goals? We don't have any goals because of injuries to him. Uh, he just didn't get enough of a sample size, but regardless, zero goals. We have to take that into account. Um, if we come down here to Lucas Spalvis, we see he's only getting 0.33 goals. As somebody who plays a poacher about half the time he plays, we're not getting a lot of goals from him overall. Um, reasonable total and reasonable assists. So let's, I mean, we're getting something, you know, out of him about, you know, we'll say, what is that? About 0.6 total, which is pretty good. Um, you know, that's that's more than him. But if we add them together again, we start to leave him behind. So We'll look at it, but as far as just straight goal scoring, we haven't got as much out of him as we'd like. Um, we could change that a little bit by making him our key penalty taker, um, but he was, even though he should be really good at it, he was really bad at it for me last time. Um, penalty of 14, composure of 14, finishing of 15 as opposed to Mads. Um, composure 15, penalty of 14, finishing of 11. So he should be a little bit better, but he really wasn't for me. Um, and besides, we've got that taken care of in another role. We don't have to have him do it. So let's look at, we look at chances per 90. Um, I like this, but this is more of a, a creativity thing. And this and assists and goals are going to go into something that I like because it's called team goals per 90. So when these guys are on the field, how does the team as a whole do? And that's going to take into account their positioning, both offensively, defensively, well, mostly offensively. Um, you know, anticipation, what type of vision they have, even if they're not the one that gets the assist, so they're the one that solved the problem and fed it up to the guy that they needed to, all that sort of stuff. And we can see Elias, top, in the top on the team, 3.15. When Elias is in, our team scores goals. 
Whether he gets credit for it anywhere or not on a specific stat, I don't care. My top three, my favorite top three for goal scoring is Timmy, Elias, and uh, Julius in there with, with, with Bionda, uh, Bionda back there, Julius back there as maybe a mid-center, and Huth and Timmy up as our strikers. That's my favorite group, and it seems to be the most successful, even though we don't necessarily see those stats for Elias on an individual basis. On a team basis, we do very well. And coincidentally, we don't give up goals when he's in. We only give up 0.73 goals per 90. So we're winning essentially an average of 3-1, to one, a little bit better than 3-1, to one, when Elias is in. Uh, and Lomans Roman, very, very good as far as goal scored, 2.93, but we're giving up two goals a game when he's in, which is a little bit disappointing because he's kind of a defensive player. <laughs> um, you know, so interesting. Um, so what I'm really interested in is what is this difference between team goals per 90 and team goals allowed? Or uh, what are they? Yeah, allowed. I don't know where team, con, I don't know where the abbreviation comes from. So Elias is probably number one on the team. We could plug these things into a spreadsheet and do the math, um, but we're fine just kind of eyeballing it here. So he's number one. We're looking at that. We're looking at Timmy down here because we're thinking we're thinking striker at the moment as we start to plan ahead. Same thing. We're winning just about three to one. We're not quite as good. You know, we're at 1.8 here difference with Timmy. Uh, Biada. Biada is about 1.4. 1.5 difference. And where do we get with um, Spalvis? Mr. Lucas Spalvis down here at 2.19. One of, of those players that have had time, we score the fewest goals, third fewest goals with him on the pitch than anybody else. And we're allowing 1.26. So he's reasonably defensively, but we're down to a difference of less than one as opposed to one and a half to two for everybody else. So when he's on the pitch as a team, we don't do as well. And that may be because he is a poacher. He's a poacher that doesn't score a lot of goals. Um, but you know what? He's had 16 starts and two sub appearances. We've had a pretty reasonable run for him. So he's only creating 0.2 chances himself as far as creating the chance. He's getting goals at 0.3, so one goal every three, and he's getting an assist one every four. All in all, for somebody who happens to have a high injury susceptibility, he's tied for second on the team for uh, salary. And we've got him locked up for a little while. I just don't think he's and he's not going to get better. This is what he is. So if he can't do it at level three, how is he going to do it at level two or, or the top league if we get there? Um, so I think we want to cash in on him. I believe he's also pretty close to our highest paid, maybe our second highest valued player. Nope, highest valued player. And I think... We're getting less out of him than anybody else. So I'm going to transfer list Mr. Spalvis. I'm going to do it right now. Transfer listed. Um, Usually telling people we want to cash in on them because they're really awesome um, works. Which actually ties in with actual soccer player psychology as far as I can tell. Um, I'm just going to say I'm going to put you out there and see what's going on. Oh, wait. So he's not happy about it, but he's not terrible about it either. That's okay. So we're going to go ahead and let's let's flip these back up here so I can find them easier. Let's let's transfer list. I like that. I like that. I'm going to do that for you. Transfer listed. Yes. We've got some control on him, but I think we'll go ahead and I've got an asking price of 2.5 million. Let's see if we get it. We've got him under contract for a while. We don't have any major interest in him at the moment. I'm going to maybe knock this down to unspecified. We'll just leave that as unspecified and um, 
We're going to say OK. And now I'm going to offer, transfer offer to clubs. We'll just throw it out there. Yep. Now, same thing for Kraus. Now, Kraus, uh, pretty good. 1.5 as far as our uh, goals allowed, goals um, scored. Um, oh, here, we'll just do it this way. Um, Kraus. Um, you know, again, though, now, I'm, I'm going to say all these are pretty equal, 1.07 to 0.9. He's in the bottom half of goals allowed. He's played well for us. And, um, you know, we, we score reasonable goals as well, 2.54. So one and a half, pretty good reason. But again, very high and very high. <laughs> Both susceptibility and salary. And there's interest in him right now. If we go ahead and we go, he's already transfer listed. So I don't have to do that talk there. Um, but if we take a look at transfer stats, we can see there's major interest from clubs right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to throw that out as well. Um, I've lost him. Um, where are you, Crow? I'll just come back here. And we will go transfer, offer to clubs, offer to clubs. Yep. Um, we're going to continue to re-offer Mr. Andre Hanal. Transfer, offer to clubs. Yep. Yep. And... Wolfgang will go ahead and do another transfer for him, another offer anyway. So all the players that we had transfer listed, we've re-offered. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take him out, and we'll put Jan Oli back in. And that's what I'm going to do. So that's my thinking. We're looking at kind of injury susceptibility, salary versus kind of how the team plays as a whole individually. It felt to me like Spalvis was underperforming. I couldn't really prove it by looking at kind of these numbers you know, for just individual here. But when we start to look at kind of these numbers, you start to see a little bit more that as a team, he doesn't make us better. There's there's players themselves who are good individual players, and there's players who make everybody around them better. I would say Spalvis is a pretty decent individual player who doesn't make the rest of us better, if that makes sense. And in combination with injury susceptibility and salary, we're going to see if we can cash in on him while he's worth something. And that's my plan going forward. So just a short video for this one. Uh, keep you guys in the loop on my thoughts and my plans and, and all that sort of stuff. We'll see you next time. Cheers. I know I said cheers, but I'm back. I hit continue one time. Those are the offers I have for Spalvis. And a couple offers for Kraus. He's got a value of 800000 I'm going to say this isn't a good enough one. Per week selling team. Oh, those are loan. Um, no. They want us to pay his salary. So they're going to give us 165, but they want us to pay a salary. So no, we're gonna we're gonna turn that down. Um, yeah, we'll reject all offers of lower equivalent value. Okay. Um, they want us to pay half. They're willing to give us 500, but we would pay half of his salary. Are there any additional clauses on that one? Okay, so we haven't seen anything from Austria when yet. Um, I don't really, I think that's kind of a horrible one. I don't want to, I'm not going to pay a salary. No, that's. We're going to reject. That one's not a good enough one. We're not looking to move him and continue to pay his salary. Look, if you're not going to pay his his asking price, you know, if you're not going to pay something close to his value total, you know, we're out, you know. And you're you're these are low balls with that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Spalvis, um, 1.2, 1.2, 1 1.4. Moscow's is preferred. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and accept.
Now we're going to turn. Uh, Fenerbahce, I'm sorry. We're going to turn down that one. No instructions. Because I'm not paying his salary. Right? I like these. Um, AZ, again, they want me to pay. They want me to pay. They want me to pay. These all get, these all get denied. I mean, we're not, we're not cutting wages to continue to pay wages. Now, they want to just give us a straight 1.5. They want to give us 20% and a little bit less. I'm going to go ahead and accept all of the rest of these. Um, it's either a little bit more money up front or um, or potentially some money on the back end with, with profit from next sale. I don't know that there will be a profit from the next sale. Again, I'm worried about injuries, but we'll go ahead and accept those. He likes Moscow. That's fine. And we'll go from there. I didn't really kind of expect that much. And then I guess we didn't get a whole lot of interest on the players were really, that aren't worth anything. So anyway, that's it. Thanks, guys. Cheers.